What is up, YouTube? This is Fable Grimro, back again with, an, with another deck profile for Cardfight Vanguard. I'm giving you guys uh, my Genesis deck today. Uh, Genesis are a new clan out of the recently released set 10. Um, actually, they came out in set 11, because we got set 11 before set 10 over here in America. Um, bunch of stuff behind that. I'll go into that some other time. Um, but I'm giving you guys... Uh, my Artemis build, um, it's a really fun deck, um, the deck does a lot of things cool, uh, Genesis are kind of like how, uh, Narukami and Gold Paladins were sort of like a reimagining of the Royal Paladin and Kagero clan, so they're sort of like replace or like update them, so Genesis sort of update the Oracle Think Tank clan, if you guys watched my Sukiyomi build, that's Oracle Think Tank. Um, so let me give you guys the the rundown here of the deck. Um, my starter is the Grade Zero Artemis. Uh, just a quick note before I go any further. Some people I've seen running this deck run just the Grade 2 and the Grade 3 Artemis when they do their builds. I'm doing the full ride chain because uh, I don't really have... People say, like, you know, well, ride chains are consistent. I don't, I haven't really come across those consistency issues yet with this deck because you don't really need to get the ride chain off and full. And even if you miss a grade, it's not the worst thing in the world because you can always, um, there's a lot of ways to fix the chain, especially with the soul charging aspects of this clan. Um, you can definitely do what you want, or if you just miss up one step, it's not the end of the world. It's not, it's not like uh, a Sukiyomi where, like, you have to only ride um, the specific units. You can get away with riding other units in this clan. So, starter Artemis. She does two things, one good and one bad. Uh, the good one is when the Bowstrings of Heaven and Earth Artemis, which is the grade one version, rides on top of her, you can look at the top seven cards of your deck for a Twilight Hunter Artemis, which is the grade two version, or Battle Deity of the Night Artemis, which is the Grade 3 version, and add it to your hand. And then shuffle your deck. Put the rest back, shuffle your, back. Uh, shuffle your deck. That's the good. The bad, however, is her second skill I find absolutely useless. Um, it's sort of like a forerunner skill. If you would ride any unit that isn't the Grade 1 Artemis, um, you can call her back to rear guard. Being a only a 4,000 unit, and there's no way to get her from your field back into your soul. Uh, I have I never ever use the forerunner skill if I attend if I misride her. I just don't use it. The plus one in the soul is a lot more important than the four the four K booster. So that's sort of mistake number one that I see I've seen people do with this deck is that they actually use the forerunner skill of the Artemis. Don't do it. Uh, trigger lineup. I got eight crits. Uh, four are the uh, Kukuri Hime, who is sort of. Um, I'm going to make a lot of references to uh, Dark Irregulars with this deck because I find that they share a lot of similar units and play pretty similar with the soul charging aspect. She's sort of like a Dark Knight critical trigger of Dark Irregulars, um, or like a Flame of Victory, that kind of skill, you can put her into the soul to give your Vanguard uh, plus 3,000. Uh, so the, plus three, the, the boost is nice, but the big thing is she puts herself into the soul, which is nice for using all of your uh, soul blasting abilities that the deck is very heavy on. Four draw triggers. And four heal. Pretty standard stuff, nothing fancy there. Now, for grade ones, four perfect guards. Uh, no explanation needed. Kushinada, she's pretty darn cute. And perfect, guard, perfect guards are, you know, mandatory of four in pretty much every deck, especially nowadays with all the break rides and cross rides, and the crazy uh, crazy Vanguard Grade 3s that we have out now. Um, 
Next up, for Bowstring Heaven and Earth Artemis, the Grade 1 version. She gets, uh, she has two abilities. First one, she gets plus 1,000 for having the starter in your soul. So she's 8k on Vanguard if you ride her over your starter. Uh, the second ability is pretty cool in that when a Grade 2 Genesis, not named Twilight Hunter Artemis, the Grade 2 Artemis, rides this unit, uh, if you have the starter in your soul, you can look at the top seven cards of your deck, search for up to one Twilight Hunter Artemis among those seven, ride it, and then shuffle your deck. So she is pretty cool in that she's um, more of a ride, she has a ride fixer ability, so if you do actually uh, misride your grade two, you can then have a second chance to search for the grade two and then ride it again. Um, this is especially helpful because not only does it fix your ride chain, but it also gives you a plus one in soul. So the scenario, the quick rundown of this, the scenario is, is that you would go Twilight Hunter, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, aiming for the stars, ride your um, Heaven and Earth, look at the top seven, add either the Grade 2 or the Grade 3 to your hand. Um, so that's nice. And then if for some reason you don't have the Grade 2 still, so say you have to ride a another grade two, and if you have to ride a witch, I'll get into these in a second, it's not the end of the world, you get a second chance to look at the top seven, and if the Twilight Hunter is there, you get to automatically ride it to your vanguard. So it's a really, really nifty um, ride fixing trick. I believe I believe it's coral. The Coral Ride Chain also has an ability similar to this. I'm not overly sure. Sorry, guys, but um, that is uh, very cool. Especially in a deck that like you don't really need to get the other copies, the Ride Chain, as much as you do things. It's nice just to have that sort of added consistency built into the Ride Chain. Alright, so four of them, and then now let me explain these, the witches, the set 11 witches, which of Frog's Melissa, as well as her um, grade 2 counterpart, which of Raven's Chamomile, which I also run four of in this deck, I'll get to them. Um, the deck is very soul heavy, but it's not very counter blast heavy, and these witches are perfect use for your soul blasting and your counter blasting. Uh, when she is put into the drop zone from your soul, you can counterblast one to call her uh, to your rear guard. So, with your soul blasting abilities, uh, soul, charging, soul charging and soul blasting abilities, you absolutely need four of each of the witches in the deck, as they can help with some really crazy pluses. Um, I cannot like stress how important this card is. This and the grade two version are in the deck. Um, so, absolutely run four of these. Uh, a nice way to generate advantage, and also the ideal thing when you do your soul charging. And then lastly, to round out the grade 1 lineup, are two Witch of Cats Kumin. She is like your um, alluring succubus clone, or like a skull juggler kind of thing, where if she's placed on vanguard or rear guard, you uh, soul charge one from the top of your deck. Uh, an alternative to her that people can run is the... Uh, that's out right now is the Existence Angel, who's like the courting Succubus clone, where if an attack hits a Vanguard that she boosts, she's also 7k just like Human, you can soul charge the cop the top of your deck. Um, most people prefer the Kuman because of the instant soul charge, uh, whereas Existence Angel you have to not only attack, but the attack also has to hit. So there's a possibility that it might not go off when you want it to. Um, the plus side to existence is that it's not, um, it can be more than just a one-shot deal, but Kumin, I find, um, is sort of the more popular choice in that it's the guaranteed Soul Charge 1 right when you ride her. On to Grade 2s. For Twilight Hunter Artemis, um, just like the Grade 1 and the Grade 3 version, she gets plus 1,000 for having the lower copy in the soul, so if you have the bowstrings in the soul, she gets plus a thousand. 
And then she has another really, really nifty ability that's very, very helpful for this deck. Um, Vanguard only. Uh, when sh an attack hits another Vanguard, uh, hits a Vanguard, you can Soul Blast 2. And then if you have the Grade 1 version in your soul, you get the Soul Blast 2 more. Now, another quick explanation on how this works real quick is the second part of the ability is when it checks for the grade one. So you're going to soul charge two no matter what. And then it's going to check to see if you have the grade one in your soul. So the nifty thing is, is if you end up getting your ride up and, you know, the attack hits, the ability goes off, you soul charge four. Um... If you're still missing the grade one out of your soul, and this is your vanguard, and it hits, you can soul charge your two, and then if you soul charge the grade one version off your first soul charge, then it will check for the grade one, and then you get your additional soul charge. So it's pretty cool as just another sort of uh, ride fixing, uh, pseudo ride fixing aspect of the deck. Uh, so pretty nifty, and Soul Charge 4 in this deck is absolutely crazy. Alright, so 4 of her. And 4 of the Grade 2 uh, Witcher Raven's Chamomile. Same effect as the Witcher Frogs and Lissa, in that when she's sent from the Soul to the Drop Zone, you Counter Blast 1, and Superior Call her to Rear Guard. And then to round out the Grey 2 lineup, I run three Battle Maiden Sahuhime, who's sort of the Emblem Master clone for the clan. Um, her effect is uh, when she attacks and she hits a Vanguard, uh, you can Counter Blast 1 to Soul Charge 3. Um, very cost efficient, uh, very uh, necessary for this deck if you want to build up your soul, um, and she's better than, uh, I believe there's a starter and a grade 1 that also is like a counter blast 2 for a soul charge 3, and she's only counter blast 1, so she is uh, the most cost efficient of the soul charging um, Genesis units. Now, for the grade 3 lineup, I run... Three, Oracle Queen Himiko. Uh, she is the break ride. Um, I'm only running three as uh, the grade three lineup in my build is a little bit tricky because uh, I need to balance out the break ride, the break ride riding, the ride chain itself, and then also the uh, sort of like the tech finisher that I have in here. Um, so you can run three or four Himikos. Uh, depending on your space, I'm running three at the moment, but the break ride is very, very good for the deck. Um, so, first she's Lord, that'll never come to, into play. When she attacks a Vanguard, you can Soul Charge 1, then she gets plus 1,000, so she becomes a 12,000 attacker on her own. And then her limit break is when a Genesis rides this unit, you choose up to two of your Genesis rear guards, and, get, and they get plus, plus 5,000, and then your Vanguard gets plus 10,000 and an additional skill, which is uh, Soul Blast 3. When that unit attacks, you would draw a card. Uh, very good, very good balance of both card advantage and drawing, as well as a power boost, which is very helpful for your normally weak rear guard columns. Then I also run three Battle Deity of the Night Artemis, the Grey 3 Artemis. Uh, she too uh, has the ability, just like the other artists, where if you have the grade 2 in the soul, she gets plus 1,000. So she's 10k without the grade 2, 11k with the grade 2. Her limit break is pretty similar to that of Tsukiyomi's, uh, where when she attacks a vanguard, you can soul blast 3 to draw 2 cards, and then put 1 card in your hand into your soul. And then she also gets an additional plus 5,000 power. So, again, very nice combination of both card advantage as you get a plus one 
off the drawing uh, and then uh, also an initial card in soul, so it's really only like a net minus two out of the soul, so she doesn't really utilize the soul as heavily as some other units. Uh, and then I run two Eternal Goddess Iwanagi Hime. She is sort of like a mini Vermilion effect. Uh, my have her, I have her in here attacked as like a finisher unit where I get my break route, I get my ride chain, um, and then I drop her, uh, and I'll use her soul blast, her, lim her limit break, which is soul blast six, to retire my opponent's front row rear guards. So that way I can take out interceptors and um, prevent their attacks, and just it's all around just very nice for um, a late game swing. So uh, builds pretty fun, pretty fun. Um, Genesis are definitely a clan that's going to get better as more stuff's released as they get their own trial deck, and they also uh, get um, a few more. They actually have like three different break rides, and they also get a uh, a cross break ride as well. That's a restanding cross break fight, cross break ride in Minerva. Uh, really good. So this is definitely a clan to watch out for in the future. Um, also, also a. Uh, Shout out to my friend Jazz, as I also have the Artemis deck, of course, in the Artemis sleeves that she sent me. So, I was told to give her thanks for that. So, uh, yeah, deck is pretty fun. Uh, not quite there competitively with some of the other clans that came out in set 10, like Liberators and Genesis. Um, but definitely a fun deck to play. Uh, and definitely a clan to uh, watch out for and can be very dangerous if uh, they're able to go off like they do. So let me know what you guys think of the deck. Uh, peace out, YouTube.